All right. Um, yeah. Drum roll, please. Welcome everyone to Rebecca's Private Idaho uh, Base Camp 2023. And this is going to be a quick, short webinar. Kind of what is RPI Base Camp? What it's about? Why it's amazing? Why you should be part of it with us? So um, I'm Rebecca Rush. I am one of your hosts. I'm the founder of Rebecca's Private Idaho, multi-time world champion, two-time cycling hall of famer. Uh, founder of the Be Good Foundation, and I am coached by the amazing world-class Tim Cusick, who's my coach. And together, um, we are the masterminds behind uh, Rebecca's Private Idaho Base Camp. And so I'm going to give you a first a little bit of background, just quick background on Rebecca's Private Idaho, if you've never been, um, and even if you have. And then we're going to just dive straight into what RPI Base Camp is about, why it's amazing, why you should join us, like I said, and also answer your questions. So we'll do the Q&A at the end, um, and we'll just kind of go through some explanation. This is, Tim, how many years have we been doing RPI Base Camp now? I think uh, this is the third or fourth year. Maybe? It's really the fourth. Fourth, the three, yeah. like official years. I remember kind of that, that when we did the challenge, that really yeah. was a big kickoff. So that it, it it it's three full years really but yeah and it's i mean it's a good story the genesis of it we launched it during uh this kind of collaboration with my coach and myself during the pandemic really to help me stay motivated and tim's like what's it you know you got to get back to training and so we created a community and that's what this is about is is a training community together with me and my coach and a couple other amazing people in my network so really the the goal was to pull in the access to the experts that I have access to as a professional athlete and make them available to everyone from nutrition to coaching to gear reviews to all that kind of stuff to sort of bring you into the circle. And so that's what RPI Base Camp is about. Rebecca's Private Idaho is, um, hopefully you already know, it's a gravel event uh, going into year 11. It's one of the top gravel events in the world, launched in my hometown in the Wood River Valley of Idaho, Ketchum Sun Valley area. And I launched Private Idaho for a few different reasons. It's always had the mission of people, purpose, place, bring people together in the most beautiful landscape I've ever experienced. That's why I live here. Um, and bring the community together to ride together, have fun, to ride with purpose. It's a fundraising event for the Be Good Foundation that uses the bicycle to change lives and and place. So again, you're when you come to Idaho, you're going to see that Idaho is really quite a spectacular place. There's there's nothing else like it on earth that I ever found. It's why I lived here. And so the genesis of Private Idaho was really to to show people my backyard and to bring you together and and to ride for fun. Um, with a purpose. And it's as simple as that. 11 years in, the mission hasn't changed. We've grown to 1,500 riders and we have everything from a 20 mile event to a four day stage race. So there really is something for everyone. It's really important to me that that pros are challenged and beginners feel welcomed and, and there's something for everybody at RPI. But we're going to talk about a little bit of um, of how our hard private Idaho is. My nickname is the Queen of Pain. And so you might have been to some other gravel events that maybe aren't uh, very gravelly um, and are pretty smooth roads or even pavement. Um, this is remote, rugged terrain. And with the intention not to beat you up and make you suffer, but to actually provide a transformative experience for, for, for you. What I've discovered is doing hard things. People ask me all the time, why you do all this hard stuff? And I really find that when you commit to something, you do something hard that you didn't believe you were capable of, you change as a human being. And that's why I'll never retire from doing that stuff. It's why I like to really challenge other people because it's so inspiring for me to stand at the finish line and see people finish their first hundred miler or their first 20 miler or their first stage race or their first gravel event. And so the route is hard. Um, it's very, very remote. Uh, about five minutes after you leave town, you will be out of cell phone coverage and in very ro remote terrain. And it's, it's unsupported. We have aid stations out there, but we don't allow, you know, your friends, your family, your mom, your dog, they're not going to be out there. Um, I'll be out there to give you a hug. There's a great community of riders, but it's very remote. And for most people, riding out a cell phone range is kind of an anomaly. It's kind of weird. People are like, 
wait, what? I can't just like, you know, pull up a map if I haven't downloaded it, or I can't call, you know, an Uber and like get out of there if I want to. It's a committing backcountry terrain. And that's what makes it really unique and special. There's not a lot of places on earth where you can ride in that way. Literally, once you leave the course, the terrain hasn't changed out there for hundreds of years. There's a few ranches and, but otherwise it's just beautiful, pristine mountains. And so it's very remote. It's very rugged. You'll have some smooth gravel. Um, you have about uh, eight miles of pavement and then you start sector one of the gravel and there's only one sector so you do not return to pavement again um, until you're back in town back in Ketchum and so it's remote and rugged but that's what makes it really special um, the environment is another challenge to it we're at high altitude the lowest you'll be is 5800 feet at the start and we go up to about 8500 feet um, if you're doing the stage race we go up we're touching up around 8700 feet so elevation is definitely a factor for people um, it's also mountain weather so that means it's dry it's high alpine we've had temperatures from 90 um down to uh 32 degrees we had snow one year and so um it's a wide range it's pretty typical in the mornings it's 40 ish degrees and afternoons uh 80 85 so you'll get a wide span of temperature ratings you get a lot of wind um it really is a pretty cool experience you know like I said, it is a transformative experience. It's not an easy ride, but that's why we have RPI Base Camp because we really want people to come prepared from whatever level you are. I want you to come here and have the best time that you can. And RPI is, it's called Rebecca's Private Idaho because of the remote terrain, but also because I'm welcoming you to my backyard. And so my, I feel a responsibility that I want you to be prepared so that you have the most fun, not because I care what time you finish or if you win or if you're first or last or somewhere in between. I want you to be prepared because it's more fun that way if you're prepared. And then you're also going to join this community. So I want to kick it over to Tim and, and have him explain a little bit about our collaboration. And I'm going to emphasize Tim uh, isn't going to brag about himself, but he's a world class coach. He's coached me for a number of years. He's coached Olympians, multiple national champions. And what I really love about Tim's coaching style is it's for everyone. Um, he doesn't talk. He can get as nerd as you want on the tech or he can speak my language you know I'm not super techie he really does make the training and the science behind training kind of understandable and palatable for anybody at any level and I really love that about him as elite of a coach as he is he's really great at making plans that suit everybody and bringing everyone up a notch so um, Tim I'll kick it over to you now and and you can talk a little bit more specifics about our training together and the base camp program program. Well, I think that, and thank you for that high pressure introduction. <laughs> I'll, I'll see how I can uh, live up to it. Um, you know, it goes back to what you said, and I think it was a great way during the pandemic and, you know, with Rebecca's events being interrupted, we decided to do this challenge and make the RPI event, which was unfortunately canceled, a worldwide challenge. And we had to prepare Rebecca. So, her and I were chatting about it and we were like, well, what's it going to take if I'm really going to do the challenge and I'm going to, you know, and, and we, at the time we actually ended up doing an Everest challenge said, look, it's such a unique event. We need to think about the key things. And when you train, there's a certain series of principles that you need to follow and they're physiological principles. We, we understand the human body pretty well. And one of the ones is specificity. And it's one that like actually is pretty simple, but yet a lot of people don't fully grasp or, or utilize. So when Rebecca and I were talking about doing it, we said, well, look, we've got to be specific. We have this long climb. We have this rugged terrain. We have high, uh, high elevation. We have some wind, some exposure. So it's not just about the climb or the terrain or the power. It's a whole package. And we started laying out what it would take to be successful. And at the time, we were talking about her. Like I was coaching her. That's how I do my coaching. Oh, you have a challenge. You want to you know, achieve a goal. What's it going to take? And we start doing the specificity. And then we actually got into the discussion about motivation. And at the time, we were very shut down pandemic-wise and stuff like that. And we had some online winter virtual programs that we did. 
and we started chatting, what if we formed a training community all around the world, following these same kind of specific principles and training with you, Rebecca? <laughs> and she said, well, that would be highly motivational. So we did it. And we put together this idea of a, what's it going to take to have a race or a ride plan, depending on what your exact goals are, and then work back to not only bring Rebecca well prepared, 110% prepared, we wanted to bring this entire community with us. And that evolved into Basecamp RPI and training with Rebecca. And it's funny, we say train with Rebecca and you see that online now or you hear somebody talking about it on the you know, web like I am now. People were shocked that they were actually training with Rebecca. Like that's what she's doing. She's riding her bike, she's preparing. And then now we've had that RPI base camp each year. So as Rebecca's doing her final prep, we all train together. I do it. And so does the base camp team, the team of coaches that will be supporting this process. We're all doing the same training. And here's why it's part of the transformation. Base camp is a tr community based coaching process. And what it does is it is an inviting, inclusive community of people leaning into each other for motivation, for inspiration, for information, you know, and it it's a whole new approach towards coaching. And it's something that really goes beyond this older school one-on-one -on -one relationship and uses the collective power of community to do all those things, to keep you motivated, keep you accountable. So there's a little of that too, right? And to keep you learning and growing and achieving. It kicked off to a great start that year mm -hmm. and it's been going every summer since. A couple of highlights about the way the program works. Basically, we're going to focus on the final eight weeks of your training. We're assuming you're coming with some basic fitness. You don't need to be like highly fit, but you probably don't want to be laying on the couch for the next four weeks. That might be a little too much work, but the program is going to be eight weeks. Here's why. It takes the average human being about four to eight weeks to adapt to physiological stress, to stimuli, to training. So we want to make sure that the eight-week program is really going to get us our ability to give you good quality training, motivate you to get the work done, teach you how to prepare for the event, get the specifics in place, but give you eight weeks to truly adapt so when you show up, you're prepared to ride. The programs we put together, and I'll go through how we do in a little bit, is individualized to you, but we're following a community training program. So there are certain days that are universal. All the hundreds of people that'll be in the program are doing like the same workout on Saturday or the same workout on Tuesday. So then we compare, we review, we discuss those workouts. We can inspire each other. Every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm doing a workout review and walking you through what you should be looking for in those workouts and how to get them done. And then, you know, reviewing them when you're complete. So they're individualized to you, but they're not fully individual. And I'll explain the difference in a moment. Basically, what happens is we load your training plans. We actually do a fitness survey first. And then you turn in like how, you, how many hours can you train? When can you train? What are you looking to do? And we cut and the plan is individualized to you. We load that in a training peaks account. Um, you know, it's a free basic account. If you don't have one, it doesn't cost anything. And it's actually premium for the eight weeks you're in the program. Um, so easy to follow. And then all you need to do is join our community, right? Once you're signed up, then you join in the community and you just start training along with the group. Myself, I'm your head coach. I'm the head coach here at Basecamp. I've, I've coordinated and built all your training plans. I'll be making sure you're getting through the training well. I will also tell you our my partner and base camps exercise physiologist, Dr. Namrita Brook, who has a PhD in exercise physiology and her master's in nutrition, will be guiding your nutritional development. So this is a full program. You will have training, you have some strength elements in your training, and you'll have full nutritional guidance. Hey, Tim, I want to just clarify to the group here, when we say we're doing the same training each day, we're doing the same progressive program, but depending on the hours that you have 
per week yeah. to commit and your level of experience, yours might be tweaked a little. Like mine and Tim's workout, it's going to be the same structure for that day, but it might be a little shorter. You're going to hit your own heart rate and your own power zones, your own, you know, zones that you can do. So we're doing the same pretty much the same workouts and kind of progressive plan, but don't feel like, oh my gosh, I have to do Rebecca's workouts or Tim's workouts. Yeah. It's that the, you fill that out ahead of time. That, and that's when we say individualize, it's the same structure. We're, we're all going to be like, oh my gosh, we have intervals on Tuesday. How did it go? But you know, don't think that you're going to have to do the same thing as somebody who's a pro level cyclist. You're doing a similar structure, but tailored to you. Great, great point. Thanks for pointing that out. Exactly. And and there's typically two days where you have that same structure a week. And then the rest of the days are individualized to you totally. Like you might be doing one thing and another group might be doing another. Like the, it, it, it is only those two. Sometimes it's three. There's two weeks out of the eight where it's three workouts that are similar. Because that's great, right? On those community days, we do exactly what Rebecca just said. How did everybody do? I might have been doing an extra interval or two less than Rebecca or whatever it is. And she might be going a little harder than I might be going. But the reality is we're all having the same structure. So we can really motivate. We have those harder workout days. We're in the community. We're chatting along. Is everybody ready for today? You know, who's and when we're done, we're all kind of posting. Here's how mine went. And you'll be amazed how much the motivation, inspiration, and accountability comes from that. And that's what I love about this community-based coaching approach. I've been one-on-one -on -one coaching and I still do. I work with professional athletes like Rebecca, but the community thing is great because I just love to watch people motivating people, people helping people and building something special together is what we do. When you walk away from this, you're going to be a smarter and better athlete. You're going to learn so much more about training and how to train better. You're going to learn so much more about nutrition and how to fuel better. You're going to learn how strength plays a role in your training. You're going to learn about biomechanics. You're going to learn how to uh, pedal in a headwind and how to pedal in a tailwind when you're up top uh, above Rebecca's home. Um all kinds of stuff. So you'll take that knowledge way beyond your RPI performance you'll take in the future. But I'll guarantee you something else. And it's been so amazing. Rebecca and I have been watching this for years. You'll take away community. You will make friends. You're going to meet people. You're going to train along with an amazing community of wonderful leaders and professional athletes and people. That's yeah. what makes, when people say is what makes base camp so special it's not really the training plan. It's not the fact that you get these world-class coaches and PhD leaders and professional athletes. It's the fact that we form a community. We struggle together. We succeed together. We learn from each other. And it's amazing to watch how much that community experience lasts. What I love seeing, Tim, is you see then when, you know, the community members, they may not be a PhD or coach, but everyone starts to share. Like someone would be like, oh, you know, does somebody have any advice on, you know, what type of saddle they like to use? And someone will chime in or I'll chime in or, oh, who's, and then to see when everyone actually, actually gets together in person at Private Idaho after they've been sort of digital training partners for eight weeks. And then it's this really cool family reunion where you come to an event and you didn't know anybody. And all of a sudden, you know, a hundred people that were in the training program with you. And so it really does make it a lot more fun. And you, the education actually comes not from from, oh, it does come from there's world class what you'll have access to for the cost that this is is really kind of unprecedented but you'll also have access to each other which is really cool there's a lot of knowledge just in the in the community of the participants and then you'll see people hook up like oh i'm i live in detroit is anybody else doing a group i'm you know i'm coming to detroit and people will start having these matchups to ride together um in in other places not just in idaho well you know it's so cool right you'll be training for eight weeks you're going to get to virtually know a lot of people yeah and then you're going to be at rpi base you're going to be at rpi and you're suddenly going to have 100 plus friends riding with you that's it's pretty so cool cool it's part of the motivation it's amazing how we are you know the groups gel at these at rpi as an event it's really really cool the other thing rebecca said that just be clear everybody we have elite athletes that do base campus training and we have people who just learned how to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. What's so cool, that's what I mean by lean in. 
we don't have attitude that elite athletes will help teach that new rider. That new rider will have a way that professional coaches and athletes can answer their questions. Elite athletes and other new riders can also share in the experience. What's been so special as a community is we mix all those levels of athletes and everybody gets stronger. Everybody grows in their knowledge and everybody grows in community and meets a whole bunch of new friends. I think two really cool things to talk about, Tim, to touch on that build the community and also the education piece are the locker room, if you want to touch on that, and also the, the Facebook community, private Facebook community discussion group. Do you want to just quickly touch on those? Yeah. You know what? Actually, let me say this. Here's how it works. I can do this in one minute, then, okay. then we'll go. So one, you sign up and join. We have a special discount if you're on tonight. What was the discount? It's RPI 25. RPI 25 for 25% off and uh, just for you. Yeah. So you can go in and sign up tonight for that. So sign up and join. In, I think it's the second week of June. I should have actually looked up the exact date. I think it's June 12th. You'll get a fitness survey. And in that fitness survey, it asks about your training history. What are your goals? how many days a week you can train, how many hours a week you can train, what do those kind of hours look like? It pulls a whole bunch of information. Based on that information, our team, I've written, I, it's really 90 some odd individual plans. Um, so the reality is you get applied one of those plans that fits your schedule. So it's individualized to that. Once we have picked the right plan for you. We load it up to your Training Peaks account, or we give you a free premium account. It's there's no extra charges, there's no hidden fees for any of this. We load that to your Training Peaks account, and then we are going to actually teach you how to use it, read it, make sure you can execute that plan. Then you join the community. So what is the community? We have a vibrant Facebook private group. You can only be in the group if you uh, obviously have signed up for Basecamp. The group is led by, mentored by Rebecca, myself, and Dr. Namrita Brooke. Um, we're in there answering questions, training along with you, but we're also teaching in that community, meaning you're going to see workout previews in advance of all your more challenging workouts. You're going to see a message from me or Namrita saying, hey, here's the workout. Here's what you should be focusing on. Here's good execution. When the workout is done at the end of that day, we'll pick select riders and say, okay, I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to review this workout. So in a way that you will be able to look at your workout next to the one I'm evaluating and say, oh, I did do that right. Or, oh, I could have improved this. We're going to give you the tools to be able to really understand the why behind you're doing that workout and then follow up and actually review it with you and teach you. And we're going to do this through this community basis. It's an interactive Facebook community. Now, because we know not everybody's on social media or might not want to do that way, even though everybody says, well, I don't know how involved they'll get. And within two weeks, within one week, you're going to be in Facebook. It's so much fun. There's so much chat and, and inspiration and stuff like that. It's kind of amazing how it becomes a true community. We also have what's known as the base camp locker room. And the base camp locker room is a place where if you're not in the social or if you just want to catch up on the learning, the things you need to do. You visit the locker room. There's a coach's corner, which is the central point of the locker room, showing you whatever's most recent that's relevant that you should see that is part of your training or that will help you be more prepared for RPI or help you be a better you know, athlete as a whole. Those are centralized. Then there's a series of support and education courses, learning. Everything else is also in that locker room that is all set up for you to access. If you wanna go beyond and get even more out of the program, we have plenty of tools for you to go as deep as you want to. And again, no extra charge, everything's included in what we're talking about. We also then, just to make sure everybody gets the information, we'll send you every Friday, you get a newsletter, which is basically uh, summarizing the week. All the great, it'll have the, the big posts in it. It'll have the key things that you'll find in the locker room. It'll have key learning stuff. So we take a multi-channeled approach to make sure you're participating in the process and you are part of the community. Sum it up pretty good. Yeah, I think it's great. A few extra things that come in. We include a few sponsor discounts that we've got from our partners. Um, you get tips and trips from the coaches. You also get 
um, Rush Academy uh, Mastering RPI, which is an online course that Tim and I did, which is all the course previews. We're actually riding on the course, showing you what tire pressure we use, showing you what bike, what the terrain looks like. So you get that class for free as well included. So um, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty fun. I think you can tell how excited I am because if you think about the genesis of it, we launched this program and created it because I needed it. I needed people to train with, to have fun. I needed a goal to shoot for. I'll also remind you, if you're not coming to Idaho for private Idaho, it's still a unbelievably world-class, amazing coaching program that you can use for any of your endurance riding events that you might be training for. It's tailored towards delivering you right on race day at RPI, but um, don't worry if you're not coming to RPI this year, you can't make it. Um, it's still incredibly valuable. Um, and, and then you'll want to come to RPI because you'll want to be part, part of the team. Um, but that's all I have. Mostly, um, I just really want to invite you to come train with me and coach Tim. And we start really soon. So get signed up. We'll get excited because I need you for motivation as much as you need me. Um, and <laughs> and I, yeah. I'll be training along with you. I'm already planning. I'm getting mentally ready for eight weeks of quality training. Uh, and, you know, so I'll be training. And Rita, the whole team will be training along with you. It'll be fun. It's going to be we open it. It's, it's it's a commitment. You make a commitment, but I guarantee, like I said, that my goal with Private Idaho is that you have a transformative experience, that you push yourself hard, you commit to something, and on the other end of it, you're more knowledgeable, you have more friends, um, you're a better athlete, you know, you feel happier and healthier. Neuroscientists say two of the top five things that make our brains happy, two of them are included in this program. One is community and the other is exercise. And so I'm not going to tell you what the other three things are. Um, um, but yeah, two out of five of the things that make us happy are all wrapped into this program. So um, I really hope you'll join. And uh, that's all I've got for tonight. I let's think... open it up to Q&A. Yeah, let's do some Q&A. Tim, did you want to stop? And No, we'll just, just plow right through, kidding? I think. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Um, okay. Anybody, you can, if you look at the bottom of your control panel, you'll see a question and answer, little uh, button, I guess you'd want to call it. If you click that, you can type in a question. We probably should have said that earlier because you could have been typing. Yeah, in. questions can type there. Um, I also put the discount code and the link to join um, in the chat so you can find it there. But yeah, stick any questions in the Q&A. Um, and while, they're, while we're waiting for some of those to load up, I'll get... Um, some of the questions that I've gotten is, is like, well, what if I can't do every workout? What if it's, you know, I've got a family wedding on this one day and I've got this other thing on this other day. That's okay. There is flexibility based in the program. Um, you know, we do ask that, you know, the more you commit to it and adhere to it, the more you'll get out of it. But absolutely, there are rest days built in for sure, because we need those. There's the ability to shift things around a little bit. And like Tim said, there's two or three really structured workouts for the week that you really try to not alter those. But then there's some freedom for you to go ride your bike with friends and, and you start to find a way to, um, you know, hit your social needs, your riding needs, your training needs. Um, it's really not that hard to infiltrate this into your life. What I will say though, is if you do, you know, one workout a week, um, you're not going to hit your, it's progressive and it builds. So you're not going to hit the goal, but there is room. I have kind of an 80% rule, 90% rule. Um, that'll get you pretty far there. If you can commit to most of the workouts, um, and, and commit to the eight weeks, it's short enough that it really isn't to overwhelming. And so I will say week one, we hit the ground running, um, you know, cause there aren't a lot of weeks to waste. There's not a lot of throwaways. Um, but if you're not perfect, that's okay. Yep. So I get a lot of questions about that. And we um, spend a lot of time teaching you how to deal and help exactly. you work through those processes when life happens and things come up, injuries, stuff like that. We're there, we're coaching you through the whole process and not just by telling you do this, because I said, so we're going to teach you why, how you, ch so that you carry that knowledge forward. All right. I'm going yeah. to take the first question. You get the second one. We'll just trade them off. Okay, so cool. The first question, are the plans only for those doing the stage race or for individual rides? One of the first questions of the questionnaire is what are you participating in? So whatever event you're doing, stage race, baked potato, whatever, the plan is customized. It's specific. That's a better way to say it to that event. So 
all events, we have supporting programs and plans. The plan is to help you achieve success in whichever event you're participating in. So yep. Yep. tater tot to the stage race all the way through the whole shebang. Um, all right, next question from Myrna. How friendly is the event towards folks who do not ride clipless? I already know the answer, but for the benefit of others. Um, so there's a, a saying I heard a long time ago from a friend uh, in mountain bike racing that's run what you brung. So it doesn't matter what bike you ride. It doesn't matter what kind of pedals you ride. Ride what's comfortable for you. So we have people that ride gravel specific bikes. That's what I ride. We have people that ride mountain bikes. We have people that ride fat bikes. Um, we have people who ride clipless pedals, flat pedals. Um, we have tandems. We had a guy who rode his uh, six-year-old daughter on a little toe behind thingy last year. Oh, that's awesome. So um, really, I would say the equipment choices are up to you, whatever you're comfortable with, but do practice with it. And we can talk, have some of those discussions in the RPI base camp of like, oh, I've never thought about clipless. Should I think about clipless or what are the pros and cons? So really um, the equipment choices are up to you, but you will have a resource to be able to talk about some of the other choices so yeah run what you brung um flat pedals are totally fine <laughs> awesome i'm going to take the next two because they're really one question um so i'm currently signed for baked potato is this training appropriate for that as well question mark first gravel ride stoked and then goes brianna goes on to say can training be adapted to mountain bike gravel peloton absolutely so one, I already answered, like, whatever event you're doing, we have a training program for you. Queen stage, baked potato, tater tot, french fry, we've got you covered. So it works perfectly for whatever you signed up for. But I'm going to say something here. If this is your first big gravel ride, this will help you get prepared. A lot of people go out and they're kind of making that journey. Think about it. In endurance sports, we get this wrong. Like sometimes they're like, well, I'm just going to go. You just like, I'm just going to go try and I'll experiment and I'll do this and I'll, and I'll, and I'll figure it out. And eventually maybe after some success and failure, <laughs> often maybe more struggles than you should go through, you eventually start seeking help, finding people that can teach you or hiring a coach. This gives you the ability to do that first with a community of people going through that experience. This way, when you go to your first big gravel event, you're more prepared than ever to have fun, not just succeed, but to have fun because you know what you're getting into. You're going to be more prepared. You're going to be ready to roll. Emma, I'd love to comment on that because a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't need a training program or something this intensive or complete because I'm I'm just new. I'm recreational. I'm not that experienced. I'm not that pro level. And I, I sort of, Tim already touched on it. We have people in base camp, me, you know, world champions and total beginners. Um, but I want to sort of debunk the myth that, that, you know, if you're not a really good athlete or you're not or you're a beginner that you don't need training you actually are so ripe to actually have the biggest hugest jump by getting some education and some structure and some science so instead of just like trying to figure out on your own go ahead and fast track yourself so that you won't be a beginner for that long because you're going to go through this program and by the end of eight weeks you are not going to be a beginner um, and so I would say, you know, don't downplay, oh, I'm not an athlete. Everyone, if you're here listening, you're an athlete. If you, if you want to take your fitness seriously, you're an athlete and, um, everyone, every level deserves to have good quality coaching and education. And it's really going to benefit you. Um, and like I said, you may see a two or 3% increment increment at the pro level, which is huge, but you might see like a 50 or 70%. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, if you're coming from a less experienced level, you're going to see dramatic jumps, which is really inspiring. It's really motivating. It's going to get you super excited and you're going to have more fun. Great. And okay. just you asked, can the training be adapted to mountain bike, gravel, Peloton? Yes. So all the training is in training peaks. It's in structured workouts. You can do them outdoor via any head unit. Training Peaks will talk to any head unit, or you can just remember the workout. And that's what I do. I don't load the workouts. I just remember what it is and I go out and do it. Um, you could do it on the head unit. You could do it on your own. You can link your account to Zwift or RGT and the workouts or will load on their own. You can do them on a Peloton bike. You can execute. So yes, it's not 
agnostic. It's not like I must own a mountain bike and I must own a power meter and I must do this. We, you know, have set it up that the structure training can be your guidance. And I'm actually going to tackle the next question with yeah. it. And that is if you train with power, heart rate, or perceived exertion, we show you how to convert the structured workouts. Now, they're all written in power because that's the clearest understanding and power is pretty prevalent today, but you can simply translate. You can, it's a very simple process. You can flip your workouts from power to heart rate to RPE. That's up to you. And the reason we let the athlete switch them instead of doing it for you is you might have a power meter on your road bike. You only use your heart rate monitor on your mountain bike. And you might have days where you know, you don't, or you forget your heart rate or something else. So you need to just use perceived exertion. You can just, you basically edit through the workout. You flip it from power to heart rate to perceived exertion back to power. So you set it. So if you have different bikes with different uh, systems of tracking your effort, we got you covered. The structured workouts are there to support you. Yeah. And, and coach Tim's going to give and tell you how to figure out that you'll have those zones for yourself on heart rate power mm -hmm. that's part of what the process of figuring out you know what heart rate should i be hitting and and things like that what kind of metrics that's a great point we teach you how to test then we show you how to set your own training zones again we're going to teach you how to fish and not just do it all we walk you through the nuance of getting it right we show you the tech how to do it and even after we show you and you you know teach you the tech how to do it if you're struggling we'll go in and do it for you and help. But it's something we're going to try to teach you so you leave the program with greater knowledge on how to train on your own. And also the question about, is mountain bike okay instead of gravel? 100%, run what you brung, whatever bike you have, as long as you're riding a bike. Um, you know, eventually you may want to upgrade to a gravel specific bike if you're going to really get into it. But um, plenty of people ride on a mountain bike. Um, yeah, so that's totally fine. Tim, do you want to take this one about the strength training? Yes. So we, the way we handle strength training is, so it's actually going to be an answer a little bit to the next two questions. We have these little educational programs, these short educational videos that I do. I call them nerd casts because mm -hmm. Rebecca, as she knows, I'm a nerd. Um, so the reality is we do these little videos teaching you how to make good decisions about your training, how to incorporate strength training. So like in our winter winter based program, we have a full strength training program as part of that. But as we get into this eight week prepare, everybody's kind of on a different trajectory. So building a strength training program in is too hard and isn't always the right answer. But we do teach you how to incorporate yours, how it should work within your schedule. What days are you doing your strength training and which days are you not? Because it's the not part, which is almost more important. And then how to build towards those and build your strength training through the eight weeks and bring and what to do as you get close to the event and how to do it. So we do little nerd casts on all those things. The nerd casts are posted in the community. They're in the locker room. They're on the coach's corner and we newsletter them to you. And we do them as your questions come up. We coach. So I'm not calling you up at home and saying, hey, Kristen, how's things going? Let me talk to you about strength training program. But as the questions come in, we are answering all the questions. We, we build resources to help you get through them. Then when you take it away, and it's so important because this is what's so special to me and why my motivation, you know, Rebecca's talked about hers. My motivation for base camp was to take this pro level knowledge. I've worked for world tour teams and Olympic teams and, and very high level. And I just constantly see this attitude, like we, we, we put a moat around all the good information and we never want anybody to know or to learn the good information because that would be bad if we let it out of the secret safe mm -hmm. of knowledgeable coaching. And after 15 years of doing that, I just said, there's got to be a better way, 14 years, there's got to be a better, I'm more of a share. I like to see people learn and grow and be able to solve their own problems and you'll see that come out in this program and all these type of questions. How do I put in my strength? What do I do when I need a day off? All the different things. You'll get good education and you'll carry that away from the program. All right, last question we have for the night and we'll wrap it up. As someone who lives in a very flat part of Michigan, I'm concerned with being able to train for the hills and altitude. 
Is there something is addressed in any way of the training? We address it. We talk a lot about this because you won't be alone. Um, so we're going to give you some methods and tech, uh, techniques to improve it. In the absence of hills, just not be too nerdy. You have a, a problem with how you pedal and how you coordinate muscular engagement. So we're gonna give, and we have drills and programs in to improve that process so that you're better prepared to climb once you start climbing. And yes, there's always the theory we can use headwinds and we can use this and that, but we're all actually gonna give you some better secrets and ways to better prepare you. Altitude is something else. <laughs> that one's a <laughs> tough one. If you want my answer, go spend the summer with Rebecca. <laughs> go up in the mountains somewhere. Altitude's tough to get ready for. Um, there are a limited amount of things that you can do, but we do give you some tips how to, and at altitude, you need more red blood cells, but we can fake it a little by building more plasma in your blood. So you have greater blood volume. We're going to teach you some ways to better prepare for altitude, not perfectly prepare. A couple of tips and tricks that'll help you do a little bit better as you go to altitude. But we're also going to teach you how to go to altitude. Yeah, That's a big yeah. deal because a lot I'm of people say, who don't understand that yeah. blow themselves up just timing your trip wrong. Yeah. Right. Timing and, and your pacing when you get here and you know what metrics you're looking at. So yeah, there's that's a big conversation and you won't be alone in that. So um, that will be part of it. If you don't mind, I'm going to tackle this last one because I think it's Me a great too. question. Um, Ellen asks, will this work for somebody with zero consistency in their schedule? I have free time most days, but my schedule swings wildly every week. Yes and no. Right. So I want let's start with no. So it depends on how you define consistency. If you're saying I could work out three to six times a week or four to six times a week, but yet when I get to that, will I have the perfect amount of time? If you can do that, this program will work for you and we'll be there to support you and how to tweak and adjust as you go. If you mean by you have zero consistency, some weeks you get one day of work and some uh, one day of training and some days you get four days of training, that's probably um, not enough training, but you'll still learn, you'll still be smarter, you'll get a better education. I just want you to have the right expectation. The program works really well. It's got flexibility in it, but if you can't be consistent, the reality is your fitness isn't going to grow. Consistency is the foundation of all aerobic fitness is you have to have a certain amount of ongoing stimuli to the system to keep us adapting and improving. In the absence of that consistent application of that stimuli, we tend to kind of plateau very quickly and don't get any stronger. So just the best answer I can give. Yeah, and I'm, I'm reading into this question a little bit, but she says she has free time most days. Please. So if the question is, do I have to work out at the same time every day? Absolutely not. You may is you may plan your life around. I'm going to work out at 6 a.m. tomorrow because that's the only time I have. And maybe you're working out at 7 p.m. because you have to. You know, it's not ideal. Um, but if that's if you have flexibility in your day, um, as long as you prioritize your workouts, the danger of that is if you put it off till the afternoon, you're so fatigued and tired by the end of it that that often, at least if you're like me, you blow it off. Um, right. So, I mean, so yes and no is the answer to your question, um, Ellen. The so simplest answer is if you can train four to six hour, four to six days a week, this program will work very well for you. You can put it in the mornings. Great answer. But it's really the days you need to be consistent at the time. Whatever works for you. So great point. Awesome. Well, that that was a good session. Um, I thank you, Coach Tim, for your expertise and your nerdiness, um, which we always love. So those of you who know us, we call our little shtick science and stoke because Tim's all about the science. <laughs> I'm the stoke. And, and, and really the goal of this, like I said, is to share our decades of experience to help you um, achieve your goals and have a really great time. And so you'll get world-class knowledge. You'll meet each other. You'll have a community and, um, and then we all meet together here for a big giant bike party in Idaho. So the discount code is RPI25, um, joinbasecamp.com slash RPI. And we start uh, in a month. So yep. um, a little over a month. So it's four, it's four uh, yeah. weeks from Monday. It's four weeks from Monday. It's coming fast. 
yeah. So um, hopefully this was helpful for all of you. And if you've got more questions, you can, you can always reach us on the website and check in with us. So uh, thanks for being here and uh, be good. Thanks everybody. Good night. Rest up before slow pedal. Let's try to just recover slow. We got it. You know the line.